Who's Dolly? Josh! Hey, welcome back to our stupid directions of Corbin. I'm Dolly Parton. You can follow us on Instagram. Your breasts nearly aren't big enough. That's you true. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, for more juicy content. Thanks to Patreon followers to the account, subscribe, and like button. Yeah. And uh, my, my buddy Rich got this for me because he knows that this was my teenage fantasy. Did you ever read uh, been to uh, Dolly World? No. Steph has. Has she? Well, she grew up in Missouri. Wow. So. Is it cool? Uh, she, I don't know. Has she met Dolly? No. But Which, Dolly goes to Dolly World a lot. She does. I love Dolly. Uh, I still love Dolly. Yeah. Anyways, today uh, we got a video from Tired and Refused Productions. This is Trolled and Disrespected, the Amir Khan Bollywood comeback we all want to see. So this is him kind of breaking down. Everybody thinks he's done <laughs> and over with and just because of he had a, f I guess that's Because he made a good movie that people didn't go see. I guess that's two flops by box office wise in a row. Yeah. What was this one before? It was Thugs of Hindustan, right? Or am I forgetting? I I I don't know. His first one since we his first new film since we started the channel was Lal Singh, correct? That's what I thought. Yeah. I don't remember there being outside another film outside of a maybe a cameo. Or yeah, things. I don't know that there was another film where he starred and it was his film that's been out since we so, did that, but So I think it was Thugs of Hindustan or whatever it is. Yeah, uh, it's Shima. funny. He's probably in a position where he doesn't need to care about box office. and can just make whatever movies he wants to make for the rest of his mm -hmm. life. So yeah, I but, don't think he cares that people but troll I bet, and disrespect him. Yeah, I bet he does care though, because it's he's it's he is a producer still. Sure. And also in India, it's just how you know yeah. that people liked your film. <laughs> <laughs> it's just how it is. You yeah. know? <laughs> well, weird. there is an obvious commiserate truth behind the fact that the more tickets you sell, the more people saw it, which should mean more people liked it. Yeah. yeah. Um, doesn't mean it's a good film. No. You guys know our opinion on that. Because there are movie stars that people will go see, irrespective of what the movie was, and will say that it's great just because there's stars in it. Yeah. Which makes me want to vomit bile into a bucket of horse poop. Strong visual. Thank you. Here we go. You know, whenever I've had a film that has not succeeded, uh, staring PK, it's been uh, it's been hugely disappointing. I'm a very emotional person, and I don't hold back my emotions. Uh, so I go into you know grief. <laughs> I cry. I, I feel I, you. I'm really upset. But it's very important to grieve a loss. It is a sad moment if you go through failure. And it's important to grieve that sad moment and then let it go. Well, there you go. That was great. In Wonderful. In 18, <laughs> after the streak that was considered to be unimaginable, Amir Khan got a surprising jolt at the box office with his venture Thugs of Hindustan. The actor was on a monumental run of being a part of projects that were the quintessential marriage between commerce and content could do no wrong. Such was the credibility of the star and the content he would associate himself with that even a mess of a film like Thugs of Hindustan would open to earth-shattering numbers of 50 crores on its opening day. Many were shocked on what merit Amir saw in the particular film. How is it that the same man who offered the public films like Dangal, PK and Three Idiots suddenly had lost the grasp of what audiences will resonate with? It was less to do with the conviction of Amir's performance in the film. What is that? The heavy lifting. <laughs> it was the storytelling that was the biggest letdown and the missed opportunity of capitalizing the first time collaboration between Amir Khan and Amitabh Bachchan. When failure does appear in front of a reputed and experienced star like Amir Khan, one internalizes and processes it in their own way. Amir Khan was apologetic about the same as he genuinely felt that he could not entertain the audience with the spectacle that was promised, something he did so consistently otherwise. <laughs> After a pandemic, a changed world, a more aware audience of global cinema and hate-fueled narratives on news channels and social media, his return to the big screen was met with another lukewarm response from the audience. Had Amir Khan actually lost his mojo? How could such a knowledgeable actor who also had an unbreakable connection to the audience's pulse go so wrong? How does a presumably well-made script generate such an over-the-top and inconsistent performance? While the audience may be split about the quality of Lal Singh Chadda and the sheer of dedication of Amir to the storyline and its treatment, about his performance? Ghana, the yeah. love and response that is usually they, didn't he, they thought he was uh, overacting. Not only was Amir's film not showered with love, 
it opened the floodgates of trolling and disrespecting the artist. Obviously, this is why the agree. internet takes an ugly turn where the discourse is not about the criticism of the film, but of the individual, restricting the existence of an artist only to his previous failure, forgetting all the goodwill that the man had garnered over three decades, of the stories he has told, that have heavily impacted us, and more importantly, of the global representation he has been for the country that one should take immense pride in. How is it that the hurt gets so ugly, I wondered, as people online started to dismiss the actor and his future in films, talking about how he is finished, has become irrelevant and old, and has lost the connection and stardom he once had just a few years ago. These are the same people who were writing eulogies on Shah Rukh Khan's irrelevance and career dying while he was on his break before Pathan, and are now writing think pieces of how the Badshah has never gone away. Paying heed to such theories, especially for a star who has endured several ups and downs ever since he made his lead debut in 1988, should be taken with a pinch of salt. Because perseverance runs in most of their blood, and this notion that some trade pundits can control fate is absolutely laughable. Why does one restrict the significance of Amir Khan just to his recent failures and controversies that are with no doubt in my mind blown out of proportion? It's true when they say the cyclical nature with which the news runs. The masses in India easily forget and move on to the next thing to be outraged about. But in my opinion, Amir Khan, especially for film fans and cinema enthusiasts, means more than just petty news arguments or his recent failings. Amir Khan took Hindi cinema by storm with Kayamat Se Kayamat Tak and had the foresight never to restrict himself in a particular genre. A range of choices that were commendable in an era where most actors were fit into a box. Amir would do an andaz apna apna as convincingly as a sarfarosh, and this is precisely what audiences associated with his films. Mm. A case of movies mounted commercially well and either contributing pure entertainment or something compelling to ponder over. For my generation, however, an Amir Khan movie was an event because during my formative years, he was becoming the trailblazer for more relevant contemporary and new cinema. The first film I saw of Amir Khan in the theatre was Lagan, mm. a packed theatre in Chanakyapuri, and even though the term theatres turned into stadiums is used for a lot of mass cinema today, Lagan truly was the film that paved the way for the cinema hall to become a stadium, visibly gasping, shouting and cheering at every new development in the storyline. Not only did Amir bring Indian cinema to the global map, but he kept appearing in storylines that became topics of discussion rather than just forgettable run-of-the-mill stories. That's what set Amir apart as his movies became vivid and active film discussions. Dil Chata Hai represented so many of our dynamics within our friend groups. Rangde Basanti was hipster and cool even before the term became generic and overused, and Ghajni, while being a remake of a popular Tamil film, opened the gateways for Hindi cinema to acknowledge just the commercial bandwidth their films have and the astonishing numbers that they can reach. Introducing to Hindi cinema the 100 crore club, a club that no film had reached till now. There was absolutely no stopping the man in just the potential numbers his films could reach, progressively becoming the most successful and commercial actor known in Indian cinema, introducing Bollywood to the 200 crore club with Three Idiots and the 300 crore club with PK and Dangal. How does one absolutely forget the impact Amir Khan has had on Indian cinema, of the smart choices he has made as an actor, of the movies he has backed as a director and producer like Tari Zameen Par, Deeply Live and Delhi Belly? This notion that a break from films equates to an irrelevance of a star is the same social media bandwagon that everyone jumped on to dismiss any possibility of Shah Rukh Khan returning. That too with the biggest hit Hindi cinema has ever seen. In an article by yeah, Samash failed. Jha on first post, he had quoted Amir Khan's close aide saying that after Thugs of Hindustan that he cannot afford to do a Dilip Kumar in the day and age. The context being that the legendary actor had taken a break in the early 90s only for his film Killa to be a disaster at the box office. Dilip Kumar inferred that this was a sign that his time at the films was up. What is a very interesting parallel if you see Amir Khan's current predicament and where he was in 2001, you can easily understand that it's just about time and the right project that will make the capable actor bounce back. In 2001, Amir Khan, after delivering landmark films like Lagan and Dil Chata Hai, had taken a four-year break only to return on the big screen with Mangal Pandey, which turned out to be a colossal box office failure. This made the actor re-engineer his approach to films only appearing in one or at the most two films in a year. And there was no looking back at the commercial strides That's he very, made uh, on. Hollywood if a Shah yeah. Khan can return with such a loud bang after a four-year gap, there will definitely be a perfect film package just right that will have audiences thoroughly excited and genuinely interested when Amir returns on the big screen. Is it going to be him sitting on the director's chair? 
Is it going to be an addition of the spy universe? Is it going to be something we can't even predict? We don't know. But what I can say Lao Sing is Chara that too. <laughs> Chara returns. In the cinema to cause strides globally over several years. And there's no doubt he might have the capability to do the same in the near future. And that was a video, guys. Write down in the comments below what you think about the current predicament Amir Khan is in and whether he will return with a bang. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram. The handle's right in front of you. Follow me at JammyPants4. Um, that's, he kind of just echoed what we've always thought about Amir Khan a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that we've seen quite a few of his films, actually. Yeah, we have. Uh, I, don't lot, know, I don't know who's, especially early. who's we've seen the most of. It's probably between Amir Khan, Shah Rukh Khan, and, and Irfan. Yeah. I'd say for the actor that we've probably seen the most of. Yeah. If, uh, we've seen a lot of Big B, too. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Yeah, it might be him, too. Um, but the fact that he's had such really amazing films, but they usually always have a... A message in that kind of, I mean, different. I mean, I, Ayushman kind of took a hold of that and made it like really his like yeah. thing, yeah. Um, as well, but Amir Khan was the kind of one that kind of almost pioneered the fact that it was like a big commercial film, but it usually had a really good, strong yeah. message behind it, yeah. Um, and it's something I've always thought was really stupid about Indian cinema and some of the fans, not all. I know there's a bunch of really smart people that we interact with all the time on on Twitter and and here that actually understand what a good film is and right. how mu how much money it makes means if if everything everywhere all at once made $1 it wouldn't make it any less of a great film yeah <laughs> then it just makes obviously a commercial success and you're glad when good films do yeah. make a commercial success but it <laughs> means absolutely nothing for the per every actor Outside of, I mean, I mean, if you if if you're talking about just quality of film, has had a bad film. Every actor has a thousand percent had a it's flop. Inevi it's in inevitable. Terms of a box office. Yeah, it's inevitable. Daniel Day Lewis might not have a successful film, honestly. And yeah, <laughs> if you look at what his films aren't box office uh, draws. No, his are just for specific audiences. Yeah. Um, but doesn't make them any less of a great film. Yeah. And so it's just stupid to me sometimes that people like talking about Shah Rukh Khan is never going to be. <laughs> now, look, regardless of what you think about the film, whether you think it's great, whether you don't think it's great, <laughs> the dude makes, I think, I think it's now like the most successful H indie, indie film, film of all, of all time. time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and this was a, a very intelligent observation that's going to fall on a lot of deaf ears because those ears are connected to unintelligent minds that simply like to be trolls and say negative, ugly things because yeah. it requires nothing of you to take a shit on social media on somebody. Yeah, And the reality is, I think one of the reasons, I, obviously we haven't seen Thugs of Hindustan and heard no, no, from no. people that it's not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Like we said, there's everybody makes films that just aren't, they turn out, they just don't turn out to be good. Yeah. It's a small miracle when a movie does turn out good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think the primary contributor to Los Chata was the timing. I think if he had released this movie at a different time because we were in that phase that we're still kind of in of yeah. boycott remakes. Yeah. Like come up with original content. I think that was something that I don't even know that he could have seen. At the time, yeah, especially when you read that script and you you've been wanting to make this movie for so long, um, so I I just I give very little credence to the trolls and stuff, and I'm I'm like him. Then you've been around the channel for a long time, know that the reason I'm not on social media the way I used to be because the only place I'm on social media anymore is on Instagram, and I don't look at DMs unless they're in my private accounts of people I trust and I know. I just don't read them. I rarely ever read a comment anymore because the the words impact me in ways like I know they you don't give a rat's ass. <laughs> no. And I, I love that. No. I, I wish I could be more like that. The best thing for me to do is just disconnect from it. I have a feeling he can't and he gets it a yeah. hundred million fold more. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, I... I have no doubt or concern whatsoever about whether or not this man is going to continue to make films and continue to make great films. Yeah. No concern at all. He, I'd say, 
of the big stars, he's probably one of the ones that you're most connected to, I feel like. Me? Yeah. Yeah, I was I was asked, uh, I did, for uh, the first time in a year, I did a Ask Me Anything on Instagram. And one of the questions I got that I didn't get a chance to answer because there's just too many that come in was, SRK or Amir Khan? Mm. And that's tough because I love SRK. Yeah. But there, I admittedly say there is a place in my heart that has an emotional resonance with Amir, both in the, the stories he has told on film and where he touches me as an actor. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, a difficult question for me because I, I think I look I for- Because I love SRK. I think I look for different things from each of them. And- Yeah, they're not, they're not um, the I same. Mean, they could bring similar, like obviously I think Amir Khan might be an overall better actor, I think. But in terms of just, I, I'm not really going into an SR usually, not always, but sometimes it just depends on his films, like Swadesh. He, he shows he's a very capable, yeah. great actor. Yeah, um, Swadesh and, and my name is Connor, my yeah, two yeah. favorite he, SRK. He, but normally, terms. like if he's like he's like this is a mass film, right? I'm going into it just to have fun. Like I know you haven't watched it yet, but you're going. I to. will. Om Shanti Om. Shanti Om. Om. Yeah, I had a fucking blast. Yeah, I'm going to watch it that, this weekend. That movie, it's so dumb. But it's it's a parody and almost a love letter to Bollywood. Yeah. Um, and so, like, I'm, everything is is a parody of something else, and there's just is so much going on, and it's just so fun. And I'm like, that's just at, a lot of times, not always, that's what I look for in a Shah Rukh Khan film. Amir Khan, I usually look for a little higher elevative stuff, just because I know that's usually what he brings. Yeah. I know he can bring, like, in... Asna Apna Apna, which we have not seen yet. Right. He does bring the comedy. Yeah. That's like a cult classic yeah. comedy film. Um, but I just look for different things from them. And yeah. So it's it's difficult. But I, I mean, it, here's one of the ones that I I don't think I've seen a film of his that I haven't liked yet. Uh, there's only one for me. Of Amir one, Khan? Yeah. Which one was, one was that you didn't like? The one, the military one in the snow. Oh, Fana. Yeah, Fana. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yeah. I, I didn't mind that. See, one. I try to forget the titles. <laughs> Fana, but I got you. one of the things that we've we've talked about that he didn't mention in this, and it just kind of goes without saying, is in addition to Indian movie fans being the most extraordinary celebrators, yeah. they're also the first to cannibalize their own yeah. if they don't like it. Yeah. That doesn't happen here. If if a big star, that if, if Tom Hanks has a flop, what you read from critics is... This just didn't work, and and it's really a shame. We don't yep. know why. And fans saying, wow, we really don't understand what happened to Tom. He was doing so well. If Tom were in India, it would be, he has lost it. He's lost touch with everybody. He's done. He's too old. He should retire and get out of the way. Flop He's actor. a dead flop actor. He was never any good. All of his past body of work was overrated anyway. It's amazing. Well, we've said it. Uh, India, there's nothing like there's the no love. <laughs> there's nothing like the love that India uh, uh, Indian stars get from their fans. And on the same side, uh, the other side of the coin, there's nothing like the amount of vitriol hate they can also spew at their actors that they don't. No, like at it's all. it's in the same day in the morning they can say Very how many passionate. how many times will you win my heart and then later that night say you're a piece of shit go to hell. Well, I don't, it's astonishing. I don't think it's the same people. I no. think it's. One person will say this, and a person who doesn't like Shah Rukh Khan will say the exact opposite. Correct. It's it's they're it's just waiting the, the for two, the success. Like the the the, the 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 two different audiences rise up. The Bollywood boycott people are very silent on Pathan right now. <laughs> but <laughs> right. if Jawan comes, but out, they're waiting. If Jawan comes yeah. out and is a flop, they're just behind Shah the bushes Khan, waiting. You're a flop actor. They're just regrouping. <laughs> they're just waiting. We're just waiting a few months for Jawan to come out. Yeah. And, just call Shah Rukh Khan a flop actor. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, another fantastic video. Yeah, very intelligent. Follow uh, Tired and Fuse Productions, Jemmy. He's a, he's a fantastic uh, uh, person and a uh, great uh, YouTuber. Let us know what other videos we can react to and what's your next Amir Khan. Yeah. Film, uh, last one. Uh, yeah. I, Fana was our last one. La, Lost Singh Chata 2. I agree. We yeah, should. Lost we should yeah. yeah. Well, well, you know what he should do? Was Fana our last? We make Rocky. There you go. Was Fana our last Amir Khan film? We saw that after Lal Singh, I believe. It was at the end of last year. They were right around the same time. Yeah, I think it was... I think we saw that. I think that yeah, was the last Yeah, they're right around year. the same time. We still have Gajini. We have Asna Apna Apna. We have uh, his first film. I forget the title of. I think he has quite a few films that we oh, still yeah. need to get to. Anyways, yep. let us know what should be down below. Josh!